Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are just looking at an introduction to electrochemistry. And one of the experiments that could be done in class, or a nice way to introduce this topic, is this particular diagram. If you look at this particular diagram, you've got copper sulfate solution, which you know as CuSO4. So you've got here CuSO4 solution. And you're putting in an iron nail into the solution, and you know what iron is? Fe. So you got iron, and you got copper sulfate in solution. Right. So now, if you leave it for a while, we see that a redox reaction takes place, reduction and oxidation. We'll talk about it just now, and we see that the iron nail gets a copper coating. It does not get rusted it gets a copper coating. You may see a brown solution and you'll say it's rust. But that's not the case. It's not rust. Okay, so it's a copper coating that takes place. And we see iron sulfate solution that is formed. So let's just write down those equations. So you've got copper sulfate and you're putting in an iron nail. And then we see that if you leave it for a while, that something happens and you get iron sulfate and you get copper coating. So we see this is a particular reaction that takes place. And this is called a red, uh, redox reaction, which we will explain what does it mean. That means there's reduction taking place. There's a reduction taking place. Reduction taking place and there's oxidation taking place. Now, just to tell us a little bit what is oxidation and reduction, and then we will look at this a little later. Reduction is characterized by a gain of electrons. Gain of electrons. And oxidation is characterized by loss of electrons. So, gain of electrons is a reduction and loss of electrons is oxidation. So that's how you can remember it, Leo and GER. Now, oh yeah, I just forgot, there's one more way in which you can remember it. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Oil rig. So oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. That's another way of remembering it. Now, how do the electrons, uh, which electrons are lost and which are gained, we will talk about just now. So, another experiment that you could do, if you take this a little further, we see that instead of, if we had to do this the other way around, let's just change this. So instead of an iron nail, let's put a copper nail. So, if you have a copper nail, right, and then instead of a copper sulfate solution, we have it. Iron sulfate solution, let's just write it properly. We have it. We have an iron sulfate solution. So in this particular case, we see that no reaction takes place. This does not happen. No reaction. So if you put a copper nail in an iron sulfate solution, no reaction takes place. Imagine now if you're making a cup of tea and you've got water and you've got your tea and you've got your milk and you put a, your teaspoon in there and as you're stirring the tea, the teaspoon disappears. That means the reaction has taken place. But we see that that doesn't happen. That is not the case. So that means no reaction takes place. Now, taking this, if you have to write this down in terms of uh, reactions, we can say the following. So, writing this reaction down, we can write out copper plus FeSO4 becomes no reaction. Now, how will we know if a reaction takes place like copper sulfate plus iron becomes iron sulfate plus copper and when? No reaction takes place. 
the copper plus iron sulfate doesn't make copper sulfate plus iron. Now in order to figure that out, we need our standard half reaction table. Our standard half reaction table, it is important to use the table 4B. You may be given, you will be given two tables in the final metric exam paper. So you must make sure you use the right one. And the one to use is the table 4B, the one with lithium on the top. Now, let's just look at this particular case. In this particular case, in the first case, we had iron and copper sulfate. So if you look at copper sulfate, it's in solution. So technically, you had copper 2 plus ions reacting. So you had iron reacting with copper 2 plus. So let's look at this table and let's see if we can find iron. Okay, we can find copper 2 plus. If you look down here, okay, here's iron. There's iron. And uh, let's see if we can find copper 2 plus. Uh -huh. You can't see it here, but this is copper 2 plus. Just, I found it a bit difficult to create a table. Let's just see if I got another one. Here's another one. Iron and copper 2 plus. This one looks a little bit more clearer than the last one. Let's just take this one down. So, copper 3, 4, copper 2 plus. So, we see that the iron is reacting with the copper 2 plus. And if you look at this particular case, what happens to the iron? If you look here, the iron becomes Fe2 plus ions in solution, and SO4 is 2 minus. That's why you get, this is great ten work, but you get FeSO4 and the copper becomes solid, so we get copper 2 plus ions becoming copper. So if you write down this as half reactions, we can say the following. In this particular case, we can say copper 2 plus ions are becoming copper, and we can say iron is becoming iron 2 plus ions. Now, how do we complete it? It's not complete. If you look at it, you can say that the side is neutral, the side is positive, so we must add the electron. So we can just add 2 minus here and it can be neutral. So we can say plus 2 electrons on this side, because copper is 2 plus, and 2 minus makes 0. And here copper is neutral as well, so it makes a 0. To make this easier, if you don't uh, understand it that way, you can just look here. In this particular case, and we can see that Fe is the side. I'll just write it a bit big because uh, the way it looks here, we got Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons, and we've got a double arrow. You've got Fe, that's this one. And this one here, if you write it bigger, you've got copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons, double arrow. See you. So if you look at our particular case, what do we have? We get Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons becoming Cu. So let's just double check that. So we got Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons becoming Cu. So our reaction in this particular case went like this. The way we say it is the way we read it. Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons become Cu. And you have got a single arrow there because that's the one reaction. If you look at the other one, you got Fe and Fe2 plus. Right, so if you look here, you got Fe becoming Fe2 plus. So Fe is becoming Fe2 plus ion. So in this case, the reaction is running backwards. So the reaction that runs normal, so, so, so yeah, just before that, Fe becomes Fe2 plus, and then the two electrons are by the plus side. So let's just write that down. Fe becomes Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons. So that's what we can see happening here. And then if we write down our net reaction, we can say Cu2 plus plus Fe becomes Fe2 plus plus Cu. You could say Cu plus Fe2 plus. It doesn't matter which one you write first as long as it's on the right end, right side of the arrow. Now, if you look at this case, we say the reaction takes place. And the reason the reaction takes place is that we have to realize for a redox reaction to take place, the oxidation, this is a half reaction table. 
This is a reduction table. So all the reactions written from left to right are reduction. And the ones that are written backwards are oxidation. So in order for um, uh, some spontaneous reaction to take place, the oxidation must be on the top and the reduction must be at the bottom. So the top one must be written from left to right and the bottom one must be written from right to left. And it makes a C. So if, the re if you look at the half reaction table and we see that according to what we are given in our case, that the top one is written backwards and the bottom one is written forwards, then we can say a spontaneous reaction will take place. The reaction will occur like the case where iron reacts with copper sulfate. Now, just to clarify it a little further, because you may still be asking a certain amount of questions, let's look at the case of copper reacting with iron sulfate. So if this reaction had to take place, we can say it in terms of half reactions, copper, if this reaction had to take place, right? We will write it down, FeSO4. So if it had to take place, we will say copper sulfate plus Fe. And if you have to write half reactions, the copper metal is becoming copper ions in solution with two electrons. And on this side we've got Fe which is 2 plus because it's in the sulfate, because it's a solution with two electrons becoming iron on its own. Okay, so if we have to look at these two and look at them on our half reaction table and see what's happening. So you are starting off with copper and you're starting off with Fe2 plus ions. So if we go here, let's see where's our copper. We're starting off with copper. I'm just going to keep it in blue. So just concentrate on the blue now. And you're talking of Fe2 plus ions. Was it Fe2 plus? Yes. Fe2 plus ions in solution, Fe2 plus ions in solution, right, so that's the one that's here, okay, uh, yeah, Fe2 plus ions in solution, now, in our reaction, what's supposed to happen is that the copper becomes copper 2 plus ions, so if you go to our half reaction table, copper becomes copper 2 plus ions, so this is going this way, when this copper is becoming copper 2 plus ion. So our reaction is going this way. And in terms of the Fe, Fe2 plus is becoming Fe. There's this, this nothing here. I'll just take that out because there's just nothing. There's something there. Fe2 plus is becoming Fe. And if we go to this reaction table, Fe2 plus becomes Fe is written this way. So, the one on the top is going left to right, and the one at the bottom is going right to left. So, we see in this particular case, it's an upside down C. It's not a normal C as the green case. The blue case is the direct opposite. So, because it is written the wrong way around, we can say that this reaction does not take place, and it's called non-spontaneous. So this is just the, an introduction into electrochemistry and it is important that you learn this table and get familiar with it so that you know whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. Thank you very much for your time.